Hey there, welcome back to One Over Yogi. Yeah, so it looks like, uh, yeah, the forklift's done. You guys saw that, and if you're new to the channel, go check out the video. It's a pretty neat little forklift that we built, that we built there. Uh, it's pretty neat. But, uh, yeah, we get to work on our skidoos. Well, the missus gets to work on a skidoo, and I get to work on the Articat. Now, I have a lot to do. I have to paint this whole thing again because, well, this was a nightmare to paint the first time because it's two-stroke and this is all fiberglass and it was just saturated, I mean saturated with uh, two-stroke oil. So it took me a heck of a long time to get that thing so it would accept primer and paint because it was just peeling and fish-eyeing and orange peeling like you wouldn't believe. And, you know, we all know that I'm, yes, I am cheap, but the thing is, why would it, my, why would I spend a lot of money on a paint job when, if I wrap that thing around a tree or whatever, and then I have to repaint it? Well, a paint job on that's going to cost me about fifteen hundred buck, right? So, probably we'll call that smart investment, I guess, long term. I don't plan on wrapping it around a tree, but you never know; things could happen. You know, you could uh, wake up wearing your freaking uh, wearing your pants as your hat for the day and uh, yeah it wouldn't be good wouldn't be safe but I got a lot of other things to do this one gauge here for the uh, head temps that's not working that's a uh, bad wire I already checked it out that's got to be fixed I just found this today went through the whole season so I guess that's a make work project thank God that that didn't uh, um, try to kill me this uh, winter one of these here that there right there it's broken see I don't know if you can see that but right there's broken so I do have extras of these because these are totally replaceable. It's not like just part of this and then comes up. These are completely replaceable, which is pretty cool for a 76. Um, let's see, of course, repaint, like I said. Got the silver to do, got the green to do. Uh, I may do a little bit of fiberglass work. Not entirely sure because I do have an extra hood for this that's in really nice shape, plus extra louvers, some extra gauges. Uh, this windshield is not stock. It's a million miles from it, but I think it looked pretty cool. came off of a Polaris... Uh, Polaris Quad, I do believe. Yeah, I took it and I cut it and trimmed it all down and kind of stylized it and made it shape fit sort of deal. Looks good though, I think. Personal opinion, I, I'm thinking. And then I got, see my snow flap here? It's all ripped and shredded and I want to put another one on. So, if you remember on the other videos, I worked on those lawn boys. Well, I had a part left. And it was green and it's a flap. So I figured, hey, hey, it's green. So we'll take it and we'll put it on the, uh, on my Articat. Uh, let's see what else. What else we got to do? Skis. I have to do skis. Because um, of that other video you saw there. Um, the 440 Rup with the 235, 40 uh, PSI. Seriously, that thing seriously has that. Did some phone calls. Apparently, somebody did a whole bunch of work to that motor a long time ago. I was talking about like shaved heads and forged pistons and connecting rods and blah, blah, blah. This, that, the next thing. You know, cat in the hat and, you know, Dr. Zeus it and... The whole bit. So yeah, apparently that thing is going to go like a uh, bat out of heaven. And uh, But the skis, the skis were good on it. So I'm going to take these ones here off, give them to the missus for her vintage sled, because I don't usually go with the stock sort of uh, runners, carbides underneath. I just take a great big piece of like, uh, I don't know, what size would that be? Probably about over quarter inch yeah a little over quarter inch um, just steel bar and I weld the suckers on at the front and the back and a little bit in the center and then I grind them with the grinder to give them a nice thing and this thing steers on a dime but I want to get those other keys on here because they are chrome yes and I know chrome don't get you home but you know what they say um, it's definitely well hey if you're stuck at the side of the road and it's broken at least people think it looks good just sitting there broken but so I got the skis to do, and I have that Rupp tunnel too. It's really nice, really nice. I think it's a 71 Rupp. It's the ones with the detachable side panels and all that, and quite modern for its year and its age. I think it was uh, the, 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 the Rupp's uh, Sprint, I think it was, or the Spirit, or one of them. Um, but I'm going to take that tunnel off the top of it there, like this area here, 
right there. And I was going to cut two wishbones out of it, sort of styled things, eh? Kind of like big long spoons, but they got a groove in the center for the lower base of the ski. Like for this part here. So when the wishbone goes in, it'll be uh, riveted across here. It'll give me an extra inch out this way and that way. So she'll float better in the front end. And uh, she'll bolt up because the Rupp skis actually have a bolt that goes right into the front here. Which is great, you know, that'll work out really, really cool. The missus can have these, and I'll have to just grab some of that uh, three-quarter inch bar stock, or half inch, or quarter inch, or whatever the heck it was, and uh, get that put in place. <clears throat> Myself, I like this. This is what I like. It's coming along. Um, last year it was a total riot. I mean, a total riot. Hey there, welcome back to One Over Yoke. So yeah, sorry I haven't had a video for a bit. Just been really busy with a lot of things. Uh, obviously more projects, but anyways. Uh, yeah, in uh, my end of the world, it's skidoo season. Perfect. So, um, yeah, I've been spending a lot of time getting my skidoos ready and stuff like that. And I like to make sure, go over them and everything. I'm into the vintage. Yes, I have a couple of new ones, whatever. Whatever. I like the vintage stuff. The body lines are more original, we'll say. So, what I want to talk today about is the whole... Vintage sleds and fiberglass cowls, and uh, when the uh, you know two-stroke oil comes up and splashes up against the uh, fiberglass on the backside there, it's got oil in it and it pops out this way. So, what I'm going to talk to you about today is is uh, <clears throat> what I found works best for me, the best way to deal with the situation of. When you sand something down, <clears throat> like this fiberglass, uh, that it runs a two-stroke motor. Um, when you, you sand it down, you do all your stuff, you do your prep, you do everything, everything that you have to do. And then, what happens? You prime. You might get that far. Probably not, though. And if you do just go throw some, throw some paint on it, <clears throat> what ends up happening is you end up with... Um, fish eyes, orange peel effect, and uh, being fiberglass, there's cracks you can't see, and some you can, but there's, they're a lot bigger than they look, okay? Those are spiders. Um, so what you do is, is you take, what I do myself, is I take and I bring the machine in to a nice warm shop, nice warm garage, I heat it up, get it nice and warm, start my sanding. As soon as I get through my phases and everything like that with my sanding, the whole nine yards <clears throat> on the vintage sleds with the fiberglass. Got it all sanded, the whole nine yards. And then I take it, clean it all down really, really good. And do not touch the inside with your hands. And then start moving stuff around here. Because that is still quite infected with the two-stroke. That's why there's such a big problem with that. Fish eyes, orange peel, and all the spiders start popping out. Heat it up really good, dehydrate it, get it good and warm. So as soon as you start putting your paint on, it starts annealing and setting itself up really quick and you can get an amazing shine and you don't have to deal with any of that kinds of, like I say, the fish eyes, the orange peels, the spiders, all that kinds of stuff. But you know what? You definitely have to take your time. If you don't take your time, you won't be happy. It's just like anything in life. Take your time, get it done, um, you'll be so much more happier. Absolutely. That much more happier. See, I got a little bit of sanding here. I see a little something. Of course, I can't make a silk bag out of a Selzer. Sorry. But this does have some things in the other side that are worse. <clears throat> and here's an old school Manitoba. You used to have big numbers in there. The big sticker. Put this on your machine. This is so you can ride. Okay. Like a license plate sort of thing. I gotta sand all that down there. And there was the original Articat sticker up here. So I sanded all this down off to even this out because this has to be that way. And then sand, 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 sand. There's something I do with all this, you'll see, because I don't want to have to be popping these rivets because they're all nice and tight. Um, see the same thing here. That's a big deckel there. See, but look at this. See? I do have another hood for it. I do have another hood. But I will. Uh, get to that hood but I don't want to lose the spirit of this machine because this is the way that I this is what came with it factory so this is what she'll ride until she dies 
Um, so, I, you know, a little chipping and everything like that, but you, you got to expect that, you know? It's an old machine. <clears throat> Unless you go gel coat or whatever, spend uh, out the butt for, uh, for, um, how would you say? For great big fancy paint that if anything ever happens, well, not only are you out the sled, but you're also out the money you put in for paint. Because Auto Pack is not going to care about that or your insurance company or wherever the case may be. <clears throat> so, usually every year I paint my machine anyways, the ones that I like to ride anyways. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to bore you with all the gory details about the whole sanding. I'm not going to make a video about that. But I'll show you the end product. And it'll be the same exact thing. Because these holes here are not stock. That's for my custom windshield. So you know this will be the same cowl. Everything that I kind of put together and jazz up. You know. In the same note. This here is modding a vintage sled on the super cheap. Because when you see what I do with this thing over here. Doesn't look like much. But it's something. When we get uh, this all painted up and everything like that. Get a nice shine. Keep it nice and warm when you do your painting. You have to have good heat, good heat, and heat this thing up. You won't melt the plastic. You won't, uh, thing, you, you understand what hot, hot, and, and uh, way too hot is. That's good. Um, we'll get back to you. Catch you back again. One over yogs. And, uh, yeah, we'll show you what the end result is. Hey there, welcome back to one over yogs. Yeah, so, um, yeah, as far as snow goes this year, not really happy, not not doing too good in that front, but anyways. So yeah, you saw the missus' sled there, we got that all put back together and it looks good and it runs good and uh, there was a few other issues that uh, arised, but we managed to take care of those, administer a solution to the problems. Uh, so now we're working on mine, well we're, we're done mine. And you've seen in the videos following this video or before or whenever, it, it'll be there. But yeah, this is what we got so far. Uh, like I said, you saw that before, the seat. Put a tank bag on it, I think that looks pretty pimp. Tightened up all the steering, everything's good there. I used to have a thing right here, like a piece of, oh, what the heck are they, loom. Edged on here, and it looked pretty nice, but when you're going as fast as that thing does, it doesn't stay on there very long, so I'm not going to buy a fortune into the company and try and replace them all the time. But I did pick these up the other day. So I was thinking if I could modify those in there, because that has a bolt on the bottom right there. Right? There, see? And then I would cut them here somewhere, right about there. And then I would add some nice alloy plates coming up. Of course alloy, nice and light. And plus I don't have to worry about chroming it. And then I can just bolt it right through here. Because they're only just for moving your sled around. And this thing only weighs like 280 pounds, so that works out, right? See the little bolt there and do that same thing there. So I got two of those. Right on. Or I can go fishing for skidoos out of the river, because they fall in a lot, but anyways, uh, what else did we do, I didn't touch the motor or anything, did the paint, obviously looks good, did new rivets, polished up the rivets, or not polished, put new stainless ones in, uh, new paint again, you saw that, the paint in the butt, did some painting here, but with my clear coat, I was a little too uh, overzealous with the whole situation, and I got a couple of areas that flashed funny on me, because the metallics didn't stay balanced that's very key when you're running metallic paints and you're doing your clear coat very nice even coats let's see I messed it up shame on me what else did we do ah, like I said the tank bag painted all this up here yeah got that taken care of and I put in some pinstriping here of some kind I don't know definitely 80s for sure found that at the local Walmart I'll tell you about Walmart later. It's not my Walmart's different than your Walmart. Don't matter where you are. Uh, what else? Oh yes, absolutely. Also, this was all busted here, right there. It was all just totally knackered. So what I did was, is I uh, just went up to the cabin and I have a uh, '76 Panther, which has the same cowl as this and these same foot stirrups. A lot of the machines actually use, I don't know if they're the same or different, whatever. This is the only sled for me, really, like, this body style. Like, I love this. Um, so I put in one of those on. That tightened up a lot of things, like I said, the steering. But you know what? We did get a little bit of snow, so you know what? Enough chit-chat, and let's get out there and ride. We'll catch you back out. One of the Okay, 
I forgot to also point out that I put the uh, the chrome rup skis on there. You can see those. Yeah, I put the chrome ones on, cleaned them up, painted silver on the inside, clear coated, and left a nice chrome trim all the way along. And but I had because the rup skis did not come with the shock, so I had to take and cut and copy paste print and delete and that's what I got but yeah but anywho to add to one more on that check out this bad boy snowmobile suit I got dun dun oh look oh oh yeah 76 all the way smell in the air I was three years old awesome Beautiful. Okay, well, you know what? Enough chit chat. Let's get out and ride. One of the yogs. Woo! Now, as we'll make the most of the rest of this day and go for a little bit of a rip. Yeah. That's what we'll do. Nothing too crazy. Medic! Medic! How many poles? Pretty old girl. Oh, a little bit of choke. Oh, no. Lots of them, lots of rips in this one, eh? Right on, shit. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, man. Hey, yeah, too, too much. Yeah. yeah, hard? Oh, no, she's soft. Soft? Soft? Yeah.
Not very good now is it? Oh well, it looks pretty there though. Sure does. When I got stuck right over there, I'll tell you what happened. I hit that big bump over there. Or over there. Right there. That's the culprit, right there. Son of a gun, Steve. See, I come along here. So I come along here and I hit that. Oh, and boom. Yeah. That was real good stuff. <laughs> But 
But thank God this thing only weighs 280 pounds or something along those lines. So looks like we got a bit of a dilemma here. Hey, ditch banging is fun right here. Huh? It's a good time at Ridgemont High. Yeah, for sure. See that? Okay. Not a well, problem. Okay, 280 pounds. Gotta love it. <laughs> Gotta love it. Did I get a new crack in my seat? Yeah. No, I was only born with one crack in my seat. Sorry. Let's grab the half in tomorrow. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, right. Had any damage here? No. No. Oh, she's back wedged. There's not a foot to ski in there. Yeah. In the igloo. See if we can it around a little bit more. See? That's the perfect snow right there for building igloos. Maybe sometime I'll show you guys how to make an igloo. Maybe actually I'll find out myself how to make it. We'll make it together. Just kidding. I know how to make them. Okay, so what are we doing here? We can't pull that anymore because I don't want to rip my ski out there, sugar. Oh. You know, it's like I'm beat down in there. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, see, like, look at the ergonomics of it. It's way downtown. It's like the Bebop boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, pardon my language. One, two, three, and let's wait. Hey. Uh, one, two, three. Whew. You see, this is this is how I think about it, folks. I thank the missus for helping, but this is my dumbass move. I should be getting this unstuck myself. So. Hence why I don't like going four-wheel driving or anything like that with other people because they always break their stuff and get it stuck and then they just expect you. The rest of the first part of the day started out as fun. The rest is hard work and sweat, blood, and tears. One, One. two, three. Uh. Well, Let's see. Let's see, the big problem with this snowmobile is it's got these metal cleats here from factory that like seriously that's an 18 inch chainsaw blade that's dull as hell but cuts snow like crazy so yeah let's see if i can rip my way through here like sunday church now my turn here we go <laughs> That thing is 40 some years old and I'll tell you boy, that guy had to step on the fuel on that last drag strip 
to get past me. So he's doing at least 120, 130, maybe 110, I don't know. But uh, yeah, she keeps pace, boys and girls. She's a mean son of a bitch. Sorry, I gotta go check this video 